All right, good evening. I'd like to call to order the September 24th, 2015 regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District. We'll start off with roll call. And Dave Nelson. Here. Charlie Anderson. Here. Nick Rico. Here. Ben Viola is absent. Rob McSorley. Present. Seth Garrison is also absent this evening. Next order of business is approval of the August 27, 2015. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Move on second. And do we have any comments, errors, or omissions? I have a few. Okay. Yeah. Page two, second line. Toward the end of the line where it says noted period, if you replace the period with the word at, that makes more sense. Um, last line, if you put an S on the end of investigations, it also makes better sense. And then not too far down, under D, second line, sheeting should be shedding with two Ds, no A. Page eight. Under Mr. McSorley's comments. Fourth line down, the word says should be the word say, S A Y, no S. Back to page two, the bottom, page two, relative to the last line, the carbon filter was changed? It's not a filter, it's actually bulk carbon. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I stand corrected. You corrected my correction. <laughs> <laughs> Any others? With none, all in favor of approval? <clears throat> Next item is the Superintendent and Operations Report. I'll turn it over to Mr. Hughes. Thank you. Um, copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of August is included in your packet. Our average F1 flow for the month was 1.21 million gallons per day. Our F1 quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 97% uh, biochemical oxygen demand removal and 99% total suspended solids removal with uh, averages of 6 milligrams per liter and 3 milligrams per liter, respectfully. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of August and your, is included in your packet. No issues were noted. I did want to follow up on that. During one of the rain events, uh, we were out investigating some of the high flows that we had in the industrial park area. Um, we didn't notice any, note it, anything at that time, but it also was not that significant of a rain event. Uh, the town is looking into options to provide sewer service west of the turnpike in, in the area of the Running Hill Road and Gorham Road. They have requested a proposal from Wood and Kern to complete this evaluation. I have met with the town and Wood and Kern to discuss this proposal to ensure the interests of the district are addressed. Uh, I have had a meeting with one of the homeowners on Prout Neck to discuss the potential of extending the sewer down uh, Black Point Road to his home. The homeowner has since contacted an engineer and is meeting with his neighbors to see if he can develop an interest with uh, uh, some of the other landowners in the area. This original um, uh, project has since fallen apart, but there, is, there are some um, homes in the beginning part of the project that still have some interest and they, they are still evalu evaluating whether they want to extend that sewer or not. Uh, I did we meet with a developer uh, slash owner who was interested in building a small brew pub on uh, 201 Gorham Road. 
the discussion is focused around the potential capacity reserve fees as it relates to both the restaurant and the brewery. Um, Josh Toms has successfully completed his three-month probationary period. Uh, we hired him. He started three months ago uh, as our new laborer slash operator at the plant, and he's been doing extremely well. We did have one odor complaint this uh, past month down at Four Old Neck Road. Um, I, I, we received it on August 31st, and um, Ru Rudy Hale uh, responded and found no detectable odor. I returned on the second, still found no detectable odor. Uh, I did finally meet with the homeowner at the house, and she advised me that the odors were within the house, not outside, hence the reason why we didn't find them. And upon review of the uh, I discovered that a, a tri dried trap in one of the shower stalls that they had not been using. So once they ran the shower, the, the, the problem has resolved itself. And uh, that is it. Thank you, Dave. Questions for the superintendent? Rob? Um, relative to the sewering west of the turnpike, how does that work? Is the city's initiating that? Um, Do they like they build it and then turn it over to us? That would be the intent, similar to what they it, did down at Haggis Parkway. So they would yeah. bond it off and, and and then have a TIF or something to pay for the improvements, and then they would turn over the uh, the system to us. Correct. Um, I, I guess I'd like just to comment that um, when the sewers were extended to Eight Corners and Payne Road. Um, the district did the uh, did the design and the construction, and the town reimbursed the district for the expenses. And uh, if this was going to be a um, sizable addition to our system, we're certainly going to want to make sure that we have. Um, the final say in any design issues that have to be dealt with, and uh, uh, you know we're going to be operating this for the long term, and I think uh, it would be important for um, us to be actively involved in that situation. So I think the issues we'll have to have, in addition to the logistics of design according to the district's needs and construction according to our standards it would would also include you know the capacity reserve fees and how those are going to be dealt with um, and uh, you know move thoroughly through this process and identify all the issues that we need to sit and talk with and be sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, I certainly don't want to have any friction between us and the town because we didn't exhaustively explore and discuss all the possible issues, and we certainly don't want anything coming up later uh, that folks scoping out a project of this type assumed were not an issue to find that they are, especially the capacity reserve fees. Mm -hmm. Also, along the same lines, uh, would we want to have us, you know, take the design on ourselves um, so that we could control that a little bit more? And also, you know, what if we want it in A instead of B location? Um, you know, I, I guess we're, we we drive that discussion, right? Yeah. Um, in, in the past project, as uh, Mr. Anderson re referenced on eight corners. The uh, district did do the, their engineer did the design on, high, on uh, the High West Parkway project. It was the same thing. The district's engineer completed the design for the town. So I assume that this study that Wood and Curran is going to be doing will have several options, and then that's going to be presented to the district yeah. and to the board for us to weigh on. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I think. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, but initial discussions with them so far have only been about locations Correct. of infrastructure. They're looking at um, potential of three uh, locations to go across the turnpike. And they're uh, putting costs to the various options and, and 
looking at our they will be looking at our infrastructure and the ability for it to uh, convey the flow if there's any upgrades to the infrastructure that would need to be done too. And you also made them aware of a prospective site that was that yep. was identified. Yep. Um, I made them aware of the what was uh, once um, called the Eagle Book project, and I'm sure uh, Mr. Anderson will remember that project, um, and uh, some sewers that are in the ground there, and a, uh, uh, an agreement we actually already have with the main uh, turnpike to um, put a sewer underneath the turnpike right there that's actually in place. Yeah, I don't think that I don't think there was ever a stub that was run through there as part of that. No, as far as I can tell, the the only, the only thing that was completed was the execution of the agreement. No, no construction of that okay. stub was done. But that would that would um, I believe that was a, was was intended to be a district-owned sewer. Um, within the within the bounds of the Eagle Brook project, and that um, we had had discussion about servicing additional properties on that side of the turnpike through that through the main there, mm -hmm. um, and I'd have to do some research to refresh my memory much beyond that. But uh, you're right, Dave. There is there there was. Uh, an agreement in place for us to cross the turnpike and for Eagle Brook then to have sewer service um, in proximity to the golf course because that was originally a commercial development that was going to happen uh, in proximity to the uh, not, what's now the Nonsuch River Golf Course. Yeah. So that might be an avenue to definitely, you know, to pursue. Um, the other thing would be to be sure that in the conversation we talk about capacity of our existing infrastructure that this will be loading into. When we did the eight corner sewer extension, there were there were upgrades that had to be done on our line on Black Point Road from Oak Hill down to uh, Eastern Road um, because the pipe uh, didn't have capacity to handle the additional, and so we'd have to look at those capacity issues and make sure the town's aware that we don't know what they're proposing, we don't know what their flows are going to be, um, and those are the types of issues that need to be put on the table with them so that they know that there are some complexities here that they may not be aware of. Yep. How about the pipe that comes down? Oh. He's been Sorry. holding his hand up. <laughs> the further my esteemed colleague down the on the left. Uh, I just had a few questions about the turnpike. First, what's driving this? Is there a business on the other side that wants to connect? Uh, there, there's some large parcels of land that have the potential for development, but what's holding them back from development is lack sure. of infrastructure. Okay. Um, second is Wood and Curran serving the town as the client this time around? At this time, the, this agreement with the is with the town. Okay. Um, my third question is, if it's in the Running Hill Road area, I seem to recall a neighborhood that is in dire need of sewer infrastructure called Heritage Acres. I think that we should seriously consider adding that to any sewer going into that area. Well, Heritage Acres is... I, I'm, geography, I'm a little fuzzy. Yeah, Heritage Acres is off of Payne Road. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about three miles. From and it's on miles. this side of the turnpike. Oh, that's um, the, I think the area the town is looking at is, <coughs> is sort of the new road, new road, um, mm -hmm. running Hill Road, Spring Street area, oh. which would be in the area where the target okay. store is yes. and up in that in that area. Right. So I think it's pretty... pretty Farther away Far than I thought. From, uh, I was getting it Heritage mixed up Jacobs. with another road. Sorry. Yeah. Heritage Jacobs is beyond Cabela's, south of Cabela's. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That would Susan sooner be serviced yeah. by, <laughs> by, I guess, Parkway than it would be necessarily. Probably. No. 
probably. Um, uh, the other thought I had is if the gas company is looking to expand, I'm wondering if a line, if they needed a line going across the turnpike and extending their gas infrastructure in that direction, that it might serve us to do it together, just as Haggis Parkway was done, to save on some paving costs and roadway and easement issues, just a thought. I think that well, I think they've already got their, got their line already over there, Nick. They do? Oh, yeah. I'm not aware of where their infrastructure is, except Eastern Road. And at the edge of my neighborhood, not quite <laughs> in it. Rob, you had another comment or a question? Uh, yeah. Um, the, it, going along the thoughts that Charlie had, had raised relative to the existing infrastructure that needs to be looked at, um, one question comes out about the 114 horsemen and the potential for additional flows to severely impact what could be a impacted system already. I think uh, following up on that, um, we need to recall that the Eagle Brook project paid for the upgrade in the force main at eight corners. And so we have to still be sure that we don't forget about potential future capacity from the development of their property. So we're going to have to need to look and see what we reserve for them based on the flow provisions that they they made. They paid they paid five hundred thousand dollars to the district to upgrade those facilities, and they have rights to service from us as a result of that. So we have a serious obligation to them, mm -hmm. and so that's going to have to be kept in mind as we have any discussions. Um, the, the, uh, the They bought, a, um, I, I believe the number is somewhere around 50,000 gallons per day. Yeah. Uh, I have a copy of the agreement, um, and I've reviewed it. But in your whenever, whenever the studies are done, mm -hmm. they have to include looking at capacities, three. they're going to have to use those as a given or acquire them from whoever the s heirs, assigns, or su uh, subsequent owners of the uh, mm -hmm. Eagle Brook project might be. But I, I'm just not wanting to overlook that. And I think there's, I think there's a lot of discussion, roundtable kind of discussion, that we might want to have as a board to kind of clarify in our own mind what the issues of this kind of a project are um, because miscommunication or lack of communication with the town council and the town manager on an issue like this uh, could be very damaging to the district and to the town and our relationships in the long term. And it's going to be it, it can be straightforward, but it also needs to be fairly broad discussion and wide-reaching as far as protecting the interests of the district and the ratepayers, because our ratepayers are separate from the citizenry at large in the town. So all the citizens of Scarborough do not pay to support the operations of the district. Our ratepayers do. So what's good for the town as a whole generally would be good for our ratepayers, but our ratepayers have not been asked to support investments for the, for the good of the town that they aren't directly beneficiary of. And so we need to just be careful that we keep that uh, definition, interpretation, and understanding of, of what we can do uh, easily and what, what our responsibilities are and what the town's responsibilities would be. It, it can get kind of complicated as we get into Mm -hmm. gritty, especially when we say I want to upgrade the existing system. Understood. Any additional? Yes, Nick. I have some questions on unrelated issues. Um, first, Black Point Road, I'm curious. What percentage of homeowners aren't connected up in that area of Crumbs <coughs> Neck? I don't know off the top of my head. I could find out for you. 
Yeah, I was just curious. Approach neck, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, on Black Point Road. Uh, the the sewer goes up to the post office. Yeah. Gravity sewer on Black Point. Okay. Um, so anything beyond the post office, I think one house beyond the post office is connected. Um, so you go go all the way up to the yacht club and around the corner. There. Okay. So they're all Leechfield or. Yep. And then okay. once you get to the very end of. Um, Uh, Checkley Point. Point. Checkley Point. Thank you. Um, at Winslow Homer Drive is a low pressure sewer system that's privately owned that services that side of the okay. neck. Thank you. And uh, on the brewery side of things, one thing we may want to consider for the capacity reserve fee is not just a fee based on flow, but a fee based on BOD. Oh, I've already looked at that. Okay. Good. Thank you. Any additional questions? No, we'll move on. There is no correspondence this month, but there is old business. Asian Fusion Restaurant, 62 Muzzy Road. Uh, during last month's meeting, Ms. McSorley mentioned a concern about the recommended approved flow of 1,796 gallons per day for a 164-seat restaurant. And, and that it appeared to be low. Uh, the, the project got approved at the recommended flow, but it was requested that I revisit the calculation, report back to the trustees. Um, there's a table I prepared in your notes that sh shows how we arrived at the flows, relying on the main state subsurface codes based on the number of um, uh, seats and gallon per day per seat and number of employees. Um, and the main state subsurface codes um, actually calculate out a, what they define as a design flow, which is a max day flow. Our capacity reserve fee is um, based on an average day flow over a 90-day period, and uh, the main state subsurface codes equates the two with a peaking factor of two um, when using quarterly water data, and that's how we came up with the 1796 gallons per day. Um, as always, I will, you know, most certainly keep an eye on this business as it develops, and uh, if they have a do exceed their um, their flow allocation, I will be approaching them for additional capacity reserve fee. I would like to thank the superintendent for looking into that. We had discussed it previously, and uh, thanks for clarifying that. No problem. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we confirm the recommendation of the superintendent um, at 1,796 gallons per day um, and advise the applicants that uh, should they exceed that, they would be liable for additional capacity reserve fees to be assessed in the future. Second. Um, okay. a motion and a second. Any questions? Yes, Ralph. Isn't that part of the original approval that we already tell them that anything in compass exceeding that? So really, why? I, I don't know what the purpose of reaffirming what we've already approved. Well, I want I want to I'm just confirm I'm not reaffirming what we approved. I'm I, I would like us to be on the record confirming that the superintendent responded to us. Well, it's and, obvious. And that uh and that there was no change necessary and that and that they would be responsible in the future. I'm just trying to keep the I'm trying to keep the track record well defined here with regard to future payments of future amounts, that's all right. It's part of the original conditions of approval. I don't see why we need to vote on it again. I really don't. Well, my only intent is to confirm the report that the superintendent One. gave us as having been accepted by the board since we, we since we asked them to do it. I just want to close the I want the record to be closed on this. It was closed. Well, you know, I think it was looked left at open. it. He responded to it, and I don't think we need to vote on it. It's, the project's already approved. But we, you know, if we do vote on it, it will be closed. And we do have a motion and a second. Additional questions, concerns? Sorry. All in favor of approval? 
Opposed? We have one opposed. Abstained. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Under new business, 33 Church Street Municipal Release Deed. Uh, as a result of a district lien maturing, this property was foreclosed upon. All monies to, owed to the district have since been paid. I re recommend authorizing the treasurer to execute this municipal release deed. So moved. Seconded. Motion to second. Any questions or concerns? All in favor of approval? Not opposed. And the next item is the eight month budget summary. Uh, the eight month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions on the budget summary? None. All in favor of approval of the eight month budget summary? Unopposed. And we have public comments, however, we have no public with us this evening. Start with trustee comments, and to my left was Nick. Uh, kudos to the plant and the operators for 99% removal. Well done. Good job, Josh. Charlie? Uh, another successful month of operations. Thanks to the staff for that. Um, And I think that's uh, that's all I've got for now. Rob? Uh, congratulations to Mr. Toms on his successful completion of his three months. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the staff who do quite uh, a, a great job for us. And uh, I want to thank my fellow board members for the lively discussion and uh, uh, honest uh, opinions and uh, bringing everything to the board. Steve. Thank the staff again for a great job as always. And uh, that should be about it. Thanks. The only thing I will add is uh, again echo the comments and kudos to the staff. I stand from my monthly meeting last week with Dave and uh, everybody seems in good spirits. Got to meet Josh and uh, understand he's had a a very good uh, probationary period, and uh, it would be a good asset to the district. District. With that, I'll entertain a motion with... So move. Motion to move. 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 Second. Second. All in favor of adjourn? We're adjourned. <laughs>